Hey YouTube, welcome to my next set of episodes on trigonometry. We're going to start off with trig graphs and I always look forward to doing trigonometry because I'm going to teach you guys some cool tricks, especially when it comes to solving. So there's also some cool things about graphs that's going to help you sketch things really easily. I usually find students come to me with a lot of problems with transformations of graphs. So I'm going to show you that too. So let's get right to it. The first thing we want to look at is what the graphs of sine, cos and tan are. Now we should remember from our GCSEs what the sine graph looks like. It always starts from the origin, comes up, makes one full wave, goes up to one, goes down to minus one. Then I always remember something happens every 90 degrees or something really important. So when it gets to the maximum, 90 degrees, when it crosses zero, add another 90 degrees, goes to its minimum, add 90 degrees, and then comes back. To zero. Then it's going to continue down, then back up, and then back down. Then it just goes the other way. So we got minus 90, we got minus two minus 180, sorry, and minus 270. And then here we have minus 360. Now, this type of function for the sine graph has a name, and it's a special name. It's to do with the transformations of the positive side onto the negative side. Now, if I was to highlight both sections individually, and I was to ask you, what would you need to do to the yellow highlight to transform it onto the green highlight? And after some thinking, you might come to the conclusion that if you take the yellow and rotate it 180 degrees, it would come back onto the green. And that has a special name. It's known as an odd function. Now, what else does an odd function mean? If we look at sine of 60 degrees, or sine of 30, because it's an easier number, sine of 30 degrees is a half. If you were to look at minus 30, sine of minus 30 is minus a half. So sine of 30 is the negative of sine of minus 30. And that's the definition basically of an odd function. So if you do sine of a negative number, it's just the exact same as the positive, just the negative of that. Yeah. So for example, the one I just described, sine of minus 30 is just the same as the negative of sine 30. Yeah. Sine of minus 30 is minus a half. And here you have the negative sine of 30 is a half. So you can see it's true. So this is something that you do want to remember what an odd function is. How about for the cosine graph? Well, the cosine graph starts at one rather than zero, and it comes down and then back up. It goes down to minus one. Remember, something happens every 90. Then we, if we continue that, we have minus 90, minus 180, minus 270, and here we have minus 360. What type of function is cosine? You might be able to guess based on me saying that the sine graph is an odd function, but why is it what you're thinking? If we look at the positive side of the cosine, what transformation takes you to the green side? Well, here it should be easier to tell that it's just a reflection in the y-axis. It's a reflection in the y-axis. This is known as an even function. Now, if you were to look at some specific values, Cos of 60, for example, if you were to read cos of 60, is a half. And if you were to go along, that is the exact same as cos of minus 60, which means cos of negative x is the exact same as cos of x, which is quite a nice property of an even function. Yeah. So here we could give an example. Cos of minus 60 is the same as cos of 60, Yeah, as an example. Now, this is a really important property, and it's one we use in year 13, and something that I reiterate with my year 13 students, is what is the acute angle relationship between sine and cosine? Meaning, sine equals cosine of what? Now, there's an easy way to prove this. If you look at a triangle, you can even look at the transformations of the graphs, but I think this is easier. Say you call this uh, theta, this angle theta, and I said a, b, C. Sine of theta, if I did sine of theta here, I'd get B over C. The opposite 
over the hypotenuse. Now I could have done B over C in a different way. If I use this angle here, if this is theta, this would be 90 minus theta. B over C would be cosine of this angle because B is now the adjacent to 90 minus theta. So cosine of 90 minus theta is also B over C, which leads us to our relationship between sine and cos, and that sine theta is the exact same as cos of 90 minus theta. And you can do it vice versa. Cos theta is the same as sine of 90 minus theta. Now, exam boards are very sneaky. They slip these in in random places. So it's really important that you just remember these. Yeah, they're acute angle transformations. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If you're new here and you want more maths content, then please consider subscribing. If you're learning something, then hit that like button and comment down below to let me know what you want to learn next. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Last one, tan. What does tan look like? Well, tan starts from zero. It flicks up, flicks down, and there's something special, the asymptote. Has one full flick, asymptote, and then half a flick. So it goes zero. Remember, something happens every 90. We have 90 degrees at the asymptote. 180 degrees, 270, 360. Then going backwards, we have an asymptote at minus 90. Then it's, I draw it backwards just so I don't make a mistake in terms of the last half flick. So minus 180. Then here we have minus 270. So then you know that the last half flick comes from the top rather than the bottom. So again, I see a lot of students draw in the wrong place. Okay, what type of function is tan? So you have this section of the graph. Now to decide, all you need to look at is the part of the tan graph between minus 90 and 90, and then you can decide. Now, does it look like an even or an odd function? Well, clearly it's an odd. You're, you're rotating 180 degrees. Therefore, tan of minus x is the same as negative of tan x. And you can verify that. Maybe do tan of minus 45 degrees is minus 1. And that's the negative of tan of 45 degrees, because tan of 45 degrees is 1. All right, transformations of trig graphs. I'm going to show you guys a trick to how to do these really quickly. So sketch each of the following curves for x in the interval between 0 and 360. Show the coordinates of any points of intersection with the coordinate axes and equations of any asymptotes. So the first one I'm going to do is cos 3x. So you want to sketch cos 3x for x between 0 and 360. Now the first issue here is that our range is for x, but we're dealing with 3x. So we do something known as modifying the range. I'm going to say mr. I'm going to times everything by 3 here so that instead of it being x, it reads 3x. So we have 360 times 3 is 1080. Now what do we do with the modified range? We draw the regular cosine graph between 0 and 1080. It's going to stop at 1080 and it's going to start at 0. I'm just going to fill in all the, the numbers here. Remember, something happens every 90 degrees. Now once you've filled out the x-axis, the next thing you need to do is you just think, how do we go back to our original range? Our modified range is for 3x, we want to go back to x. That means we need to divide all the x values by 3. Now you technically can keep this same graph, but I recommend you just resketch it. But essentially you just divide all these numbers by 3. So 90 becomes 30, 180 becomes 60, this 270 becomes 90. Now I can do this, you guys wouldn't be able to do this in the exam, but if you just got rid of this, you basically have your answer. Let's apply it to something that would be regarded as slightly trickier, is when you have to shift the graph left and right. Now the problem with this is that what students do is they draw too much of the graph. Yeah, they draw the tan x graph, you know, all the way up to 540 and negative, you know, 180, and they just draw too much of the graph, and then they have to subtract all of these values and then decide what is in the range. Instead, we need to modify the range. So at the moment, we have 0, x, and 360. When we modify the range, we add 45 to everything, so that the angle in the middle says x plus 45. 
360 plus 45 is 405. So what we do is we draw the regular tan graph between 45 and 405. So I need the graph starting from here. And I'm going to highlight exactly what the answer is, basically, that we're then going to unmodify the range for. That is it. That is the graph between 45 and 405. Now, the last thing, we're going to unmodify the range. We're going to subtract 45 from every single value. Now, one way you could think about this is if you subtract 45 from the green highlight, essentially what you're doing is you're moving the y-axis to where 45 degrees is, and that's going to be your answer. So, if I was to draw it again, I'm going to line up with 45. Check this out. So if the y-axis moved over to 45, it would start at 1, it would flick up. So I'm literally drawing the green highlight only. And then from all these values, I'm just going to subtract 45. So, and this is the portion of the tan graph that is all that's required in terms of sketching. So by modifying the range, you save yourself so much time. Yeah. So you only draw the part of the original graph between the modified range and then you unmodify the range by basically resketching um, and redefining the x-axis. So that's it for this episode, guys. So I've introduced you or reminded you about the three trig graphs that we need to know for AS. I've also shown you some tricks on how to do transformations of graphs. Stay tuned for the next episode. I'm going to do trig identities with you. I'm going to prove them. Then we're going to do some proofs. So if you learned something, guys, please hit that like button. And if you want more maths content, make sure you subscribe. And I look forward to seeing all of you in the next episode. Peace. Whoa.